this is Dr. Do again. This video is outside of medicine. Continue to read uh, the Iliad by Homer. I'm going to continue to read. So he cried from far on the city heights. The awesome god Apollo, but Zeus' daughter Athena, spurred the Argives on. Athena, first in glory, third born of the gods, whenever she saw some slacker hanging back as she hurtled through the onset. Now Amarensis' son, Dioris, fate shackled Dioris, fast and jagged rock struck him against his right shin. Besides the ankle pierced son of Iphorosus, winged it hard and true, the Thracian chief who had sailed across from Aeneas, the ruthless rock struck the bones and tendons, crushed them to pop. He landed flat on his back, slamming the dust, both arms flung out to his comrades. Grasping out his life, Paris, who heaved the rock, came rushing in and speared him up the navel, his bowels uncoiled, spilling loose on the ground, and the dark came swirling down across his eyes. But Paris, Atolian toes, speared him as he swirled and span away. The lancet head, piercing his chest above the nipple, plunged deep in his lung and thoughts, running up, wrenched the heavy spear from the man's chest, drew his blade, ripped him across the belly, took his life, but he could not strip his armor. Look, there were pierced cohorts, bunched in ring, Thracians, top knots, waving, clutching their long spikes and rugged, strong and proud, as the children thought was. They shoved him back. He gave ground, staggering, reeling, and so the two lay stretched in the dust, side by side, a lord of Thrace, a lord of Epians, armed in bronze, and a truck of other soldiers died around them. And now no man who waded into that work could scorn it any longer. Anyone still not speared or stabbed by tearing bronze, who whirled into the heart of all that slaughter, not even if great Athena led him by the hand. Flicking away the weapons, hailing down against him, that day ranks of children, ranks of Achaean fighters, sprawled there side by side, face down in the dust. Book 5. Diomedes Fights the Gods then Pallas Athena granted Tydeus, son Diomedes, strength and daring, so the fighters would shine forth and tower over the Argives, and win himself great glory. She set the man ablaze, his shield and helmet flaming with tireless fire like the star that flames at harvest. Based in the ocean, rising up to outshine all other stars, such fire Athena blazed from Tydides' head and shoulders, drove him into the center where the masses struggled on. There was a Trojan, Darius, a decent, wealthy man, the god Herphaestus, priest, who had bred two sons, Phygus and Idias, trained for every today, every foray. Breaking ranks, they rushed ahead in their chariots, charging Diomedes, already dismounted, reeling up on foot. They went for each other fast, close range. Figus hurled first, this spear's shadow flew and over Tydides' left shoulders, the tip passed and never touched his body. Tydides high hurled next, the bronze launched from his hand and not for nothing, hitting Figus's chest. Between the nipples it pitched him out behind his team. Idias leapt, abandoned the handsome car, but did not dare to stand and defend his dead brother. And not even so would he have fled his back, black death, but the god of fire swept him off and saved him. 
shrouding the man in night so the old priest would not be wholly crushed with one son left. But high-hearted Tidides drove away the team and gave them to Ace to lash both horses back to the hollow ships. And now, despite their courage, the Trojan fighters, seeing the two sons of theirs, one on the run, one dead beside his chariots, all their hearts were stunned. But Athena, eyes bright, taking Ares in hand, called the violent god away with Ares, Ares, destroyer of man. Raking blood, stormer of ramparts, why not let these mortals fight it out for themselves? Let Zeus give glory to either side he chooses. We'll stay clear and escape the father's rage. And so, luring the, the headlong Iris off the lines, Athena set him down on Scamander's soft, sandy banks. While Argives bent the children's back, each captain killed his, this man. First Agamemnon, lord of men, spilled the giant Odeus, chief of the Halizonians, off his car, the first to fall as he reared away, the spearhead punched his back between the shoulders. Gouging his flesh and jolting out through his ribs, he fell with a crash. His armor ran against him. Edumenes cut down Phaestus, Meronian, Boros' son, who shipped to Troy from the good rich earth of Tarni. At he, as he tried to mount behind his team and famous spearman, stabbed a heavy javelin deep in his right shoulder. He dropped from his war car, gripped by the hateful dark. Then as Idiomenius' hatchman stripped the corpse, Menelaus took Scamudrius down with a sharp spear. Strophius' son, a crack marksman, skilled at the hunt. Artemis taught the man herself to track and kill. Wild beasts, whatever breed in the mountain woods, but the huntress. Showering arrows could not save him now, nor the archer's long shots. His forty in days gone by. No, now Menelaus, the great spearman, ran him through, square between the blades as he fled and raced ahead. Tearing into his flesh, drilling out through his chest, he crashed the face down, his armor changed against him. Marius killed Pericles, son of Tecton, son of blacksmith Harmon. The finger's hand had the skill to craft all kinds of complex work, since Pallas Athena loved him most. Her protege, who had built Paris his steady, balanced the ships, trim launchers of death, freeing with death for all of the Troy and now for the ship right too. Who could the man know of all the gods' decree? I'm going to stop here today and continue next time. Thank you for watching.